Good morning, guys. <clears throat> Today we're going to go through Macbeth by William Shakespeare. Today we will study Act 1 and go through its summary. In later videos, I will be detailing every single act and every single scene in more detail, going through the quotations, the top things you need to learn, and techniques you need to learn for Macbeth. So let's get started. Now remember, it's just a summary, so it's going to be quite quick. Act 1, scene 1, begins with three witches meeting in thunder, lightning and rain. And then they speak about a character called Macbeth. So, automatically the audience in the 17th century are thinking who this character Macbeth is. <clears throat> Obviously the witches representing the supernatural right, will have intrigued the 17th century audience. The reason being is because the 17th century audience was a superstitious folk. And as a result, them speaking about the main character of the play, Macbeth, this intrigues them even further, questioning who is this Macbeth, why are they, question, why are they talking about him. So then they leave and Act 1, Scene 2 begins. Here, we're introduced to two main characters, King Duncan, and we're introduced to the captain. Now, I say the captain is the main character because in previous exams, the captain has come up on the exam paper. So you need to learn this for your exams. You need to learn the scene. So Act 1, Scene 2 begins with the captain speaking to King Duncan about what he saw on the battlefield. Now, Scotland, the king is King Duncan, and he's battling against the king of Sweden, who's <clears throat> got a traitor, the last thane of Cordor. The last thane of Cordor was a traitor who rebelled against King Duncan and now has joined sides with the king of Sweden. Now, the captain speaks and says that I saw Macbeth and he was so valorous. He was so amazing. We call him Brave Macbeth. That's a great quotation to memorize. And he saw his friend Banco fighting like swimmers, fighting there with passion, their hearts out. And they defeated the traitors. And now we're introduced to the character of Macbeth that he's this hero. And that's quite odd because Act 1, Scene 1, what happens is that we're introduced to Macbeth from the witch's point of view. Witches who are seen as evil. And then we're introduced to Macbeth in Act 1, Scene 2 as a hero. Now we're confused as to what portrayal we need of him. Then we continue, Act 1, Scene 3. The witches meet Macbeth and Banquo. They meet them and they give Macbeth three prophecies. Macbeth, you are the Thane of Glams and Macbeth already knows this because his father was the Thane of Glams. When he died, Macbeth inherited the title. Macbeth, the second prophecy is you are going to be the Thane of Cordor. Now Macbeth doesn't know that the Thane of Cordor was a traitor. He was fighting elsewhere. Therefore, this is strange to Macbeth. And finally, Macbeth will be king hereafter. Again, this is strange because the king is King Duncan and he's very healthy. And then they turn to Banquo and they say to him that you won't be king, but your children will be kings. Now, they, the witches leave. Macbeth and Banquo speak to themselves and they have a bit of banter and enter the Thane of Ross, who speaks to Macbeth and says to him that you are now the Thane of Cordor as a reward for your service. Now here Macbeth, is uh, he's got his spidey senses on. He's thinking to himself, well, I'm already Thane of Glams, affirming the witch's first prophecy. Now I've been told that I'm the Thane of Cordor, tick box to the next prophecy. Does that mean that I'm going to now become the next king? Is something going to happen to my king? Banquo's watching him. 
thinking, why is Macbeth going to a side, speaking to himself? Macbeth comes back and he says, okay, fine, let's go and meet the king, as if nothing ever happened, as if he wasn't even speaking to himself. This is quite suspicious. You see, automatically, Macbeth starts becoming this suspicious character. So, Act 1, Scene 4 continues. Macbeth and Banquo go to see the king, King Duncan. And King Duncan says, thank you so much. Well done on your bravery. And he executes the last thane of Cordor, giving Macbeth the title of king of thane of Cordor. And he says to Macbeth, as a reward, I'm going to come to your castle uninvited. I'm going to come to your castle and we're going to have a feast. In this scene, something pivotal happens. King Duncan speaks to all his fellow men, all his noblemen. And he says to them that I want to declare my son Malcolm the next Prince of Cumberland. What does this mean? This means that now the Prince of Cumberland, Malcolm, is going to be the favourite to be the next king. Let me explain. Scotland's hierarchy system, the king system, is all through democracy, meaning someone votes for the next king. By pushing his own son, the Prince of Cumberland, this indicates or this implies that King Duncan wants his own son to be the next king. Macbeth is now speaking again to himself. And he says, stars, hide your fires. Let not darkness see my black and deep desires. And here he says that I have now got someone else in my in my way of becoming king. Therefore, do I need to do something to get rid of this thorn in my way? Then we continue. Act 1, scene 5. Here, we're introduced to the character of Lady Macbeth, who's sitting in a church and she's reading a letter that Macbeth has written her, detailing what happened in Act 1, scene 2, 3 and 4. Especially the part about the Prince of Cumberland. Now, Lady Macbeth, who is much more ambitious than Macbeth, and much more scornful, and we'll go into detail in another video about why she's scornful, she says that Macbeth does not have the guts to become king, doesn't have the guts to take the bull by his horns and do something about it so that he can become king and for her to become queen. So she plans to help him. Macbeth arrives at the castle and Lady Macbeth speaks to him softly and says to him that you need to kill King Duncan in order for you to become king. There's no other way around it. You need to commit regicide, which means to kill the king. He says, okay, because he's listening to his wife. That's strange as well in the 17th century. And I'll go into detail in another video why that's strange. Then Act 1, Scene 6 begins. King Duncan arrives at Macbeth's castle and he holds a feast. Here, he speaks to his fellow men, his noblemen. And he speaks and he gives them a heartfelt, a heartwarming speech. And he says to them, that this is the plan for the future. Here Macbeth feels loyalty to his king. And he says that I don't want to go through with this. I don't want to kill her. I don't want to kill him. And he makes this plan. He speaks in a soliloquy. Moving on to Act 1, Scene 7. He speaks in a soliloquy, meaning he's speaking to himself, his own thoughts. And he says that I am never going to harm a hair on his head. But then he goes back to Lady Macbeth, who is devious, who is malicious, who is manipulative. And she says to him that had I given the same oath you had, I would have done it. But you're not a man. 
you are not a man, Macbeth. And this is strange because Act 1, Scene 2, he's actually presented as brave Macbeth, valiant gentleman. And here she's questioning his manhood. She says, you're not man enough to go and kill King Duncan. If I was a man, I would have done that. And she says some quotations. I'll go into in detail in another video. And she says that you need to go do this to prove yourself. And Macbeth, he humbly, he listens to his wife and says that this is the only way. Therefore, he lets her manipulate him. And this is the entire act one. And it's incredible because we get Macbeth, who's this hero, to all of a sudden, very, very quickly, being poisoned, like the story of Adam and Eve, and the serpent, Satan, coming in and threatening and whispering thoughts of grandeur and the sublime. And she says to him, that this is the only way we're going to accomplish our goals. So you need to actually put word and put action down so that you can become king and I can become queen. Okay, so guys, thank you so much for listening. Like and subscribe. If you like the video, let me know. Put down a comment. Tell me how it can improve. Also, let me know what you want to listen to in the future i will be going through as many gcc texts and literature texts as possible for example inspector calls dr jekyll and mr hyde the sign of four by sir arthur conan doyle and so on and so forth right if you want me to go into detail in regards to any other videos let me know the next videos i will be making will be going through act one scene one in detail until the end of Act 1, Scene 7. Thank you so much.